entered the journey, come to the song, by God you are chosen, by name you are called, to follow the vision, carry the cross, enter the journey. Good evening. God is good all the time. Let us enter the journey like the opening song calls us to do on this day. We enter the journey of this holy season of Lent. We begin our prayers in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to the celebration of Lent. As we continue the celebration of this sacred mystery, let us take a moment to pause to remind ourselves that we are sinners before God. But let us also rejoice as he opens his arms to welcome us because he is a merciful God. We ask for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing. Offerings and libations for the Lord, your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Proclaim a fast. Call an assembly. Gather the people. Notify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room, and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then 
the Lord was stirred for concern, to concern for his land, and to pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion. Wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin, cleanse me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O oh Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second book of Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's stand. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not 
be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your father in secret, and your father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to be fasting except your father who is hidden. And your father who sees what is hidden will repay you. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God is good all the time. What can we call the season of Lent? It could be called a time of spiritual cleansing. How about a time for spring clean up. It could be called a time to give up or to, or to take on. Because sometimes some of us think Lent is about, oh, what am I going to give up? We forget that we can also take on other things that we like to do. Lent it's a happy time. Except for children. Children will grumble. They will complain because they have to give up candy and all that. Right? We all did. Growing up. But the, the time of Lent is very important in our spiritual lives. That's why I like how the liturgical year is laid out. We've been wearing green since after Christmas. Now we are back to purple to remind us of this penitential season that we are in called Lent. The first reading today, I love that reading so much from the prophet Joel. That reading begins with the second chapter. It says, even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, even now. You know why I love that, that powerful first line, even now? It tells me that God does not worry so much about yesterday. Yes, he would love for us to do better, as always, right? But sometimes people beat themselves so hard, they're like, you know what? I offended God, I did this and that. There's no point in even trying again to come back to him. But God himself says, even now, you can come back to me with your whole heart. He says, for God is gracious and merciful. And he is. Each time we walk into any church or even in our homes, we look at the cross with his arms wide open. That reminds us of the sacrifice he went through in order to save us. And because he went through all that, he wants to say mission accomplished to the Father. Jesus wants to say that by bringing all of us to the Father at the end of life here on earth. So he's merciful, he's gracious. He wants us to continue to return to him with our whole hearts. And then, the responsorial psalm that we heard today, that's a very powerful psalm. Psalm 51. You get a chance sometime this week. Open your Bibles. Google it. 
Psalm 51. A lot of people don't even know the history of that, that particular chapter in the Bible. It is a chapter that King David composed, a prayer that he composed after he had done some terrible things. The prophet Nathan was sent by God to go tell David his sins. David was so moved. He was ready to come back to God. He was ready to just apologize and ask for forgiveness after his terrible sin that he committed. He composed that psalm. Be merciful, O God, for we have sinned. David said, have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In your great, greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. And that chapter continues. It's a powerful prayer. Even in the breviary that we pray as priests, Fridays, every Friday, you will see that sound pop up. Very powerful sound that we can think of during this holy season of Lent. And we are reminded today by Prophet Joel that God is slow to anger and rich in kindness. It's not like we human beings. Sometimes we want to get even. Somebody offends us. We want to remind them every day. We want to get even. We want them to feel bad. God is not that way. He is slow to anger. And he is relenting in punishment. The Bible tells us today. Does that ring bell how we start the Mass? In the Catholic liturgy, we start by saying, Lord, have mercy. Before we even get into the rest of the prayers, we start at the very beginning of Mass by saying, Lord, have mercy. Meaning that we are humble before God. We want to say that we are not perfect human beings. Sometimes not even close to perfection that we acknowledge our sins before him. And then the rest of the mass continues. Lent is a time that we reflect on the spiritual disciplines that we read in the gospel today. And what are they? Prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. Through prayer, we communicate with God a little bit more. We look at those three, prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. All three of those disciplines can be summarized in one word, sacrifice. Lent is a time of sacrifice because for us to pray a little bit more, we have to sacrifice something. Somebody can say, you know what? Instead of 11 p.m. bedtime, instead of 12 midnight, for the next 40 days, I'm going to try to bring down my bedtime to 10.30 or even 10 o'clock. You know what that happens? You wake up more energized, one more hour of sleep, two more hours of sleep, and instead of just rushing in the morning, when that alarm goes off, you grab that phone, you turn off that alarm because you have a little more time because you have sacrificed the night before. You can go from shutting the alarm straight to your knees and begin the day with thanksgiving. Three minutes of prayer. Five minutes. Communication with God. That's one of the things, the spiritual disciplines of Lent. Prayer. It deepens our relationship with God in a special way. Arms given. I mean, look at this past year. All of us in here, I'll be, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be shocked if somebody doesn't know somebody back home, a friend, relative, family member who has not been affected with their jobs because of the pandemic. 
But we are lucky. We still have jobs. Have we found out a way to show some gratitude to God? Is there somebody we can reach out to to help? Is there a brother or a sister, a friend, who owes us maybe a little bit of money? 100 bucks, maybe 500. We've been reminding them, you gotta pay back. Can we just say, oh well, let me do some arms giving this time. Call the person up and say, you know what? That's okay. You can keep it. Don't worry about paying back. Is there some charity that we are passionate about that we've been able to help? What have we done with the blessings given to us? The Bible makes it very clear today. Fasting. You know, back in the day, you know, we talk about fasting. Oh, I'm a Catholic. I cannot eat meat and all that, right? Do we even know how it started? Back in the day, I'm not talking about poor families. I'm talking about average families, middle income families, could only afford to eat meat once a week back in the day. Maybe on Sundays. Families would look forward to their Sunday meal. That's when they can have meat. It was unaffordable. It was too expensive. It was only for the super rich. So to give up meat for 40 days was a big deal. You know what families did when they sacrificed? They used the money they saved for meat and help other people who are less fortunate. Today, meat is not that big of a deal. I tell you what, it, what we can sacrifice today. There are more things we can sacrifice. Somebody can say, you know, in addition to fasting here and there, I'm going to give up some screen time. We know what screen time is, right? The iPad, the iPhone, Twitter, Facebook, all those wonderful things that we have today. Somebody can say, I'm going to just sacrifice an hour or two. Or maybe on Fridays of Lent, no television. You know what happens when we do that? It gives us more time to reflect, to communicate, to reach out to people. in a spiritual way, even through prayer. When we sacrifice, when we fast, we give up breakfast or lunch, how much do we save? In 40 days, how much do we save by, by the fasting? And what did we do with that money at the end of Lent? I'll tell you a quick story. A story that I think is a miracle. Because if I can do it, anybody can do it. Yesterday was exactly 15 years. It was Fat Tuesday. Maybe not quite the same date. But it was 2016. February of 2000, 2006. Sorry. 15 years ago. A friend of mine was a pastor in Oklahoma friend of mine called me and said, hey, what are you doing? It's Fat Tuesday. Let's go have some steak dinner. It, I know me. I love food. It's not in my nature to say no to food. I said, sure. I canceled everything I have. It's steak dinner. And guess what? He's going to pay. Not me. The dude has like three McDonald's. We went to the steakhouse. I had my regular, a lot, I used to drink like three Pepsi and Coke every day. Every single day. Two will be the minimum. Sometimes three. Life was busy. I was running a parish. And I was going to school on the side. It kept me awake. Just, I had my Pepsi on that day. On my way home, I turned off my radio. I said, you know what? I'm going to make a little communication with God while I'm driving. I said to God, I have 
Three months is tomorrow, Ash Wednesday. I need to decide what I'm going to give up. Or maybe take on. I said, okay, God, in my car, I made an agreement with God. I said, I love, you know how much I love Pepsi and Coke? You know, I'm not going to just commit for 40 days. How about God? How about one week? In my heart, God said, okay, let's try one week. I wasn't ready to commit 40 days. I made a commitment for one week. I went one week without drinking soda. I was like, what? Me? I had to pinch myself. Is this for real? Second week, third week, all six weeks of Lent, I did not have soda. At the end of the Lent, that Lenten season, you know what I did? In my give and take, I calculated. I said, you know what? How much could I have saved between going to the restaurant, driving through McDonald's, and buying it at my house? I, I gave it like 75 bucks. So I wrote a check of 75 bucks to the charity pond in my, in my, in my parish. I have never had soda since 15 years. And if you guys are interested, I will show you my picture from 15 years ago. You will not recognize me. I used to be big. I kind of miss that a little bit, but not really. 15 years. If I can do it, you can do it. So let us take this Lenten season serious with what the world has gone through the last one year. This is a very good year to celebrate Lent and take it serious and remind ourselves that guess what? We are dust and unto dust we shall return. Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will call upon God's blessing upon the ash that we will place on our foreheads. O oh God, who desire not the death of sinners but their conversion, mercifully hear our prayers and in your kindness be pleased to bless these ashes which we intend to receive upon our heads, that we who acknowledge we are but ashes and shall return to dust, may through a steadfast observance of Lent gain pardon for sins and newness of life after the likeness of your risen Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Some, some holy water. The guidance that we are given from the Vatican to the military archdiocese is that this year I will say, re remember your dust and don't to dust, I will say it only once and we all say amen and then when you come up, I won't repeat that again just to reduce the flow of air, okay? Remember your dust and unto dust you shall return. Amen. Because I am the priest, I kind of happen to be also the chief sinner here, so I'll be the first to receive, to remind myself of my own humanity and sinfulness. So Martina, can you come up? Sorry, it's a surprise. Go ahead and place.
my brothers and sisters in Christ, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord of As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He raised through the right and jaws our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful awaits the sacred Paschal feast with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord the font of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like they do for, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. 
Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. That with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand and pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours now. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, as you say to all of us here today, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grants our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We turn to one another and offer the sign of God's peace. Take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. See you on me.
Let's pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, O Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here. Again, welcome to the season of Lent. Every Friday of Lent, beginning this Friday, we'll have sessions of the cross. Just a little bit that we can do to join Christ and remind ourselves of what he went through in order to bring us salvation. So we have sessions of the cross at 1700. That should last for about 20 minutes every Friday of Lent. Join us if you can, please. And I sent out emails asking for volunteers. I will be here, and, but I will need one person to help me read some of the passages every Friday. Let me know, or let Crystal, Crystal is at the back, let her know if you can help any of the Fridays of Lent between now through the end of March. Thank you for the music. Thank you for joining us for both masses today. And you guys, with the military exercise that we had today, kind of threw things a little bit off balance, but thank you for making out the time. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The mass is ended. Let us join the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Before the song, do we have anybody that just got here? New people? At the first mass that we had, we had somebody that just got here from, from Fairchild Air Force Base. Please go ahead, say your name and where you came from. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Is there any, any other person? Okay, let's put our hands together for him. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody leaving soon? Last mass with us? Okay. Brother, intercessors. 